topic is the best of people. So what did you think when you read the best of people as a title? You probably thought, and I'm talking about those whom I interact with and I had the opportunity of asking the question to, you probably thought, well, you know, we need a world with better people, so we're going to be speaking about the best of people because the last time I interacted with so-and-so, they were not good. The last time I interacted with so-and-so, they were not good. The last time we did business with someone, they cheated and they deceived. The last time we uh, perhaps, you know, ate somewhere or did something, some form of interaction with someone, they were not good enough. But I'm going to change this today. Because in Islam, Allah says in the Quran very clearly, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah is not going to change the plight or the condition of a nation until and unless every individual takes it upon himself or herself to change himself or herself. If you change yourself, that is, the, that is the moment that you will be contributing towards changing community and society. If society has changed, then many societies will change, making it a whole country that would have changed. The values become better. The morals, what we live by becomes of a high standard and we become the best of people. So, Today, we don't want to look at you. I want to look at the other three fingers, those that come to me. How can I listen to what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said? And I'm going to concentrate on the hadith. I'm going to concentrate throughout my hour, the whole speech I'm going to deliver. I will concentrate on statements made by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will explain them and we will work around them. Because the package is what, what is of essence. You know, people think that as Muslims, we are the best. But they don't re realize that we cannot just say we are best as Muslims, just by name Muslims. Rather, you need to live by Islam. You need to understand what the Messenger, peace be upon him, gave and what he taught, what he instructed, what he prohibited. And this is the reason why we are gathered here in this beautiful East London Masjid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always say it's the house of Allah. It's not mine. It's not yours. We're all welcome here. No matter what background you come from, the race, no matter who you are, you are welcome here. It's the house of your Lord, your maker. And inshallah, whatever we say will make you feel a better person, a better Muslim, a person who's loved by Allah. There is always hope for all of us. The world is filled today with much hopelessness. So much is happening that frustrates us. But we need to constantly remember the Almighty is most merciful. You can pick up a message that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distinguish it from a message that is from someone else by looking at the mercy within the statement, within the message. If you find mercy in the statement, if you find hope in that message, it is definitely the, the lofty, the high message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Let's start off by saying every one of us undertakes to improve himself or herself in so many ways. Let's not think while I'm speaking today that, yes, I know someone like this. Yes, I know a person who perhaps might benefit from this. When we ourselves have our own weaknesses, you know, give good news of perhaps a place in paradise to the one whose own weaknesses keep him or her occupied from engaging or entertaining or looking into the weaknesses of others in a negative way. If you have seen the weaknesses of another, perhaps you would like to be positive about it. Try and help them. Try and say something to them that might encourage them to quit their bad ways and habits. Not forgetting that every one of us, myself included, we have ways and habits that need correction, rectification, improvement, perhaps even eradication. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So I start off with a narration that I mentioned in the same masjid some time back when I spoke to my brothers and sisters here. It was a lovely message that we mentioned. I think it was during the month of Ramadan, if I'm not mistaken. 
And subhanallah, it's the, it was just prior to Ramadan. Just before. Mashallah, just prior to Ramadan. See, my memory fails me, but mashallah, I have people to correct. That's actually something very good, my brother. I thank you for correcting me because accepting correction is also part of improving yourself and community at large. Many people think, you know, I know. In my field, I'm so and so, and I know what I've achieved. Who is he to tell me? Subhanallah. The minute we think that, we've already dropped. We've dropped society, community, because we all need correction. So much so that when the Imam in Salah, in prayer, is reciting and he makes a mistake, it is the right of everyone who knows the blunder to actually correct that Imam because it's the word of Allah. Don't make a mistake in those words. And a good person, a good Imam, a good person in the front would actually consider it an honor. To be corrected by someone, no matter who it is. He could be young and old, tall and short. He could have yelled it and screamed it from the corner or wherever else. So what? It was a correction. It was needed. Everyone will correct you, but in a different way. Perhaps some might correct you in a way you may not, you may not like it. I would like to think if I were to correct someone, I choose the best possible way so that they don't feel bad. But sometimes, even if you've chosen the best way, they will still feel bad. I'm sure... You know what I'm talking about. So my duty is to be the best when I correct. And my duty again is when I'm corrected. Don't feel bad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So I start off with a hadith I mentioned in this masjid. It's a hadith reported in Sunan. Uh, in fact, in, by Dara Qutni, he mentions this beautiful narration. And it is a sahih, correct narration. Khayrun nasi. The Prophet sallallahu says, khayrun nasi. That means the best of people. Who are they? Anfa'uhum lin nasi. The best of people are the most beneficial. Those who benefit the rest of the people the most. So if you want to know if you are the best, if you want to know if you are a top person, and usually in the Arabic language when we say khayrun nas, we are talking about the best of people. So you are in a category that is the best. There might be 20, 30 qualities of those who are right of that, at that top category, but every single quality will make you from among the best. From among the best of people are those who benefit other people the most. Now, that's quite a simple hadith. It's easy to understand. So I need to close my eyes. I need to ask myself, how much do I benefit the rest of people? If I benefit them more than others, then I am a better person than the others. But... I must not start thinking that I am better than them, which will result in a chip on the shoulder effect where you start looking down on people to say, but I am better than you because I help you. You don't help me. They could be benefiting you through dua, through prayer, through that which you do not see, which might be more valuable than whatever you've done to them. So part and parcel of the signs of acceptance of benefiting others is when it makes you more humble. When I've helped you and I never talk about it, then I've really benefited you. When I've been of benefit to you and I've never bragged, I've never made you feel like I was the one who Allah chose to do this for you. Some people will give you something and say to you, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be where you are today. That type of a statement will nullify your reward. Where do we get that from? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adha. O you who believe, do not destroy the reward of your charities by bragging about these charities or by harming people after you've helped them. If you brag and if you harm someone and you think you have the right to do that because you had the seeming upper hand at some stage, then you've lost it. You lose the reward. Allah says, don't nullify your reward. When you give a charity, be humble. When you give a charity, it is better to give a charity in a way that your left hand does not know what your right hand has spent. Although it is permissible to announce it, if by that announcement you are going to encourage others. For example, if we have a fundraiser right now, and I tell you who is going to donate a thousand pounds, and you find two, three guys putting up their hands. Uh, and then you see others who think to themselves, wow, if he or she could put up 
the hand, then I'm sure I can do better. In that way, there is encouragement. So it would be permissible to do that. In fact, it happened at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him as well, where some of the companions came up with so much and the others came up with more and others came up with more until the champion was Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu who came up with all of his wealth. I wonder how many would be able to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So the best from among you, those who are the most beneficial to others. The question is, why? Why didn't Allah say the best from amongst you is the one who stands in salah all day or all night and the one who fasts every day? Yes, those are important pillars of Islam. We cannot do without them. But when Allah spoke about the best of people, he started off by saying to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if you help others for the sake of Allah and you've helped them the most, then you're definitely from among the best of people. Because by helping someone for the pleasure of Allah, there are so many factors that come into play. Number one is you're not helping them because you want something in return from them. If that's the case, you're doing business with them. It's a business deal. I help you thinking that you're going to help me back. Or I give you something thinking that I'm going to get something back in return. That was a deal. Tit for tat. I gave you, you gave me or I'm expecting from you. The day I don't get, I feel bad. But if I do it for the sake of Allah, I'm not expecting anything back from you. If it comes, Alhamdulillah. If it doesn't come, and even bigger, Alhamdulillah. It's in the package. Notice it's the second time I'm saying it's in the package. There's a reason. I'm going to get to that, inshallah. So it's in the package, subhanallah. You do good for the sake of Allah. I'm doing good to you, or you're doing good to me, or to anyone else, not because I think you deserve the good but because I want to please Allah, you may deserve it, you may not deserve it. So when I'm doing good to someone who is good, yes, I'll get a reward. But when I'm doing good to someone who is not good, in that case, I've plugged my reward in with Allah. Because that confirms I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, because Allah loves those who do good. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. So many places in the Quran Allah says, and Allah loves those who do good. So if I'm going to do good to anonymous, person I don't know, a person I don't introduce myself to, they may not know you, you help them in any means or way of helping, any way of helping them, whether you were on a journey with them and you facilitated for them, whether you got up from the chair and allowed them to sit on public transport, whether you help them up or across the road, whether you gave them some money, no matter what it was, even if it were just with a kind word, a word of goodness or just a smile, that is kindness, subhanAllah. Many of us forget this. We think, okay, when we talk about kindness, it means money. So I took out 20 pounds and I put it in the box. I was kind. That's not the definition of kindness. That's a charity, yes, if you did it with the correct intention, alhamdulillah. But kindness extends way beyond that, my brothers and sisters. And charity begins at home. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad wasallam extends it further when he says the best from amongst you. He uses the same wording and he uses a different category of people. So he says, Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. The best from amongst you, which means the best of people, are those who are best to their family members. You know the term ahl? It starts off with a spouse and everyone else in the family. Now one might say, well, there's a contradiction here. In one narration, he says the best from among you are those who benefit the others the most. And another, he says the best from among you are those who are best to their family members. No contradiction. Your family members are people. They are the closest people to you. You're going to benefit them to start with and then everybody else. What's the point of me benefiting the rest of the world? But when I come home, we have this cat and mouse relationship with our own children as you knock the door or as they hear you open the door or as they hear your car just come into the drive. If you have a drive or on the road and everyone is helter skelter hidden and gone. Subhanallah. Why? Because dad is in. That's okay, but nowadays, because mum is in. Ooh, subhanallah, may Allah forgive us. I hope that's not the case. But you know, there's equality in the sense that nowadays we've got to speak about both. Subhanallah. May Allah help us all, mothers or fathers, no matter who. But may Allah make us.
from among those who can be kind to those we live with, who can start the trend of being good to our family members. Wallahi, if you want to be the best of people, it has to start at home. Your children, your spouses, your parents, your brothers and sisters. And inshallah, we will come across a few more narrations that explain this a little bit clearly further down. But the Prophet ﷺ also tells us in another narration, a beautiful, powerful narration, Khiyarukum, the best from among you, the best of people, Ahasinukum Akhlaqan. Definitely from among the best of you are those who have the best character and conduct. How do you carry yourself? How do you walk? How do you talk? How do you come across to the people you interact with? That will make you the best of the Muslims. Do you know that? And this is why we say, when you fulfill your salah, when you give your zakah, when you actually fast in the month of Ramadan, and when you've gone for hajj, if your character and conduct has not improved, there is something wrong with your acts of worship. Definitely something wrong. But if your character has improved, you've become conscious of Allah. Going back to the question I asked right at the beginning, why? Why is it so important to benefit others? Why others? Because those others are created by Allah, just like you are. Those others, their Lord is Allah, just like your Lord is Allah. Those others are the creatures of the same maker who made you. The minute you recognize that, you realize that you are just but a number. Subhanallah. You are a number. If you were in need, you would expect people to reach out to you. Who would put it in their hearts to reach out to you? If you were drowning, for example, if you were in dire need, we see across the globe people struggling and suffering. We hear about what may or may not happen in Idlib in Syria. May Allah help them and grant them goodness and ease. Our hearts bleed indeed. We are Muslimin. How do we reach out to them? The minimum is through dua. Thereafter, we may want to look at people who are helping and assisting in terms of humanitarian ways. And we might want to consider helping in that way if possible for us and our pockets. And that's not actually impossible. It's very possible. But if you did not realize who they are and the fact that they are suffering, not just there, but anywhere. Let's take an example of Japan. What happened in Japan a few days ago? Subhanallah, how many of us made dua for them? It doesn't mean that just because they were non-Muslim, perhaps predominantly, that you don't pray for them. That is humanity. Have you understood what humanity is? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made a great effort on humanity. That is when humanity realized the high and lofty message that he was carrying. And that's when they accepted the message. Many people think, well, you know, if they are sinful, I don't need to benefit them. Well, you've lost it because if they are sinful, you need to reach out to them in a bigger way so that they can understand perhaps they may be guided. Look at what Allah tells Musa alayhi salam when he went to the Pharaoh. And I said this in the same masjid the last time I was here. And subhanallah, this time I'm giving you the same example but with a different point. Allah says to him, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيْنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Go to the Pharaoh, you and your brother Harun, and speak to him in a soft way. Speak to him in a lenient way with soft words. Perhaps he may turn. Perhaps he may remember. He may be reminded and he may become conscious of Allah. Go out and reach to the tyrant of tyrants. This was an instruction to the messenger. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he saw Abu Jahl, who was one of the worst of Mecca, what did he do? He did not just spit on his face. No, he never did that. He actually reached out to him so much so that in the Quran and the Sunnah, there is mention made of how much importance the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave the leaders of Mecca who were not Muslim when it came to reaching out to them with the noble message of Islam. That some of the companions actually felt neglected as a result. And the Quran makes mention of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about prioritization. But never did he say subhanahu wa ta'ala that you should ignore people simply because they are sinful. Not at all. In fact, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was told 
that if you are if allah uses you to guide a single person towards goodness it's better for you than whatever than the most expensive conveyance that there is at the time subhanallah at that time the red camel may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness so the reason why benefiting others is so important is because the minute you have done that and you realize its importance you have now realized your link with the rest of those seated with you those who are not seated with you those who are outside who think similar to you and those who don't think like you subhanallah those who disagree with you as well reach out to them benefit them and that's why the prophet sallallahu says anfa'uhum linnasi those who are the best from the people are those who are the most in terms of benefit to the rest of the people he didn't say muslims he said the people it's amazing subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed blessed us and this is why another narration in sunan tirmidhi and i told you i'm going to mention hadith after hadith beautiful narration we need to know it the prophet peace be upon him says khayrukum man yurja khayruhu wa yu'manu sharruhu another one also connected to character and conduct also connected to benefiting people the prophet says the best of people the best of you is the one whom goodness is hoped from him and people feel secure from his harm they know they won't be harmed subhanallah when you walk past do people really believe that you're a person who can only benefit them you wouldn't harm them if that's the case you're one of the best of people subhanallah your expression says a lot even if you have a beard that extends to the ground but you have a lovely smile subhanallah it will melt even the hardest heart that may look at you and think for a moment what's this muslimic person doing here <laughs> may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease the minute you break into a smile you reach out to help you try to communicate you greet you reply a greeting subhanallah it changes the perception of people because that's who you're supposed to be an ambassador of the deen an ambassador of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Are we not a Khalifa on earth? Meaning, are we not a vicegerent on earth? Have we not come here in order to do what Allah wills, what Allah wants? Well, Allah put with us a whole lot of people and our interaction with them determines how good we are. Our interaction with them definitely determines how good we are. So that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, the best of the people, meaning the best of you, are those whom only goodness is expected from them. And we feel very safe from their harm. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ speaks about the Muslims. Now, you know what happens today? If you look at social media, if you look at, and I have to say social media because it's become the means of communication, right? Your phones the messages, the WhatsApp messages, whatever else it may be, a lot of it has much falsehood, deception, hurtful words, abusive words, insult, refutations that haven't even given an opportunity to the one we've refuted the chance to explain. Subhanallah. You know, if you did something wrong and I want to refute you, the minimum is I need to have an audience with you to explain to me what exactly you said and why you said it or did what you did. And there will probably be an explanation. If there isn't, step number one is to help, to guide, to be able to communicate, to benefit. People are willing to accept their mistakes if we correct them in a beautiful way. And like I said earlier, we should be from among those who consider it an honor to be corrected. But subhanallah, when we interact with others, sometimes we find people have the worst of words online. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ says, do you know who is the best? Do you know who is the best from among you? The best of the Muslims are those whom the rest are safe from the evil of their tongues and their hands. If you're a good Muslim, your tongue will never be used to abuse someone. Never. Your tongue will never be used to deceive if you're a good Muslim, your hand will never be used to harm. And when we say hand, you know, don't come to me and say, I just used a gun. Astaghfirullah. No way. Don't say that. Not at all. It means to harm someone in any way. You're harming them. So 
the, your physical abuse as well as verbal abuse. This is what is meant by it. Imagine the Prophet Muhammad more than 1400 years back is speaking about physical abuse and verbal abuse. These words we hear about them only now in the last so many decades. Subhanallah, people speak about emotional abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, so much abuse, 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 subhanallah. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has already said it. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. Another narration says, which is more interesting, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Nasu min lisanihi wa yadihi. A Muslim is a person whom the others are safe from the evil or the harm of his or her tongue or actions, words or actions. So this makes us the best of people. Ask yourself for a moment, subhanallah. Are you part of the package, subhanallah? You know, when I look like a Muslim, you expect things from me, if you're a good Muslim, to be exactly as Islam has taught. With the minute you see me, you expect a truthful person, a person who's of high standards, high morals, high values, a person who helps others, a person who's not judgmental of others. Are we really that way? Are we really that way? It is supposed to be a part of the package. The minute you speak to someone, even if it's over the phone and the name happens to be Muhammad, for example, a common name. The name happens to be Muhammad. Who are you? You're an ambassador, not just of Islam, but even your name is Muhammad, peace be upon him, named after the Prophet, peace be upon him, right? Muhammad, imagine if you were a person who did not work on your bad habits, if you harmed people, if you never helped others, if you never reached out to those who harmed you, then what was the point of giving yourself that name? Or why did your parents give you that name? Subhanallah, no wonder we call each other Mo and Mo because we're embarrassed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. When I speak of the package, you know, we speak, I, I've mentioned the word package four or five times. The reason is we're supposed to be Muslim. The minute I'm a Muslim, you know, you need to know what's inside. I give you one little example in the form of a, <laughs> a light statement. Okay. So they say there was a teacher, English teacher. The English teacher is asking the students to make sentences with words. Okay. So the teacher says, make a sentence with sugar in it. So someone says, I had sugar in the morning. Another one says, you're as sweet as sugar. Someone else says something else. And one boy puts up his hand. He says, I drank tea in the morning. So the teacher says, where's the sugar? Do you know what he says? It's in the tea. <laughs> it's in the tea. That's a package. Subhanallah. I had my tea in the morning. Where's the sugar? The sugar is inside. Didn't you say, make a sentence with sugar in it? Well, the sugar was in it. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The reason I say it's a package is because with us, you're a Muslim. Well, where's the sugar? It's supposed to be in you. The problem with us is we're on artificial flavoring. Mashallah. Sweetness. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sweet. Wallahi, to be sweet is a good quality. To be sweet, especially to the right people. Here we are speaking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His words, his actions are all there to prove his words. That's why he says the best from among you are those who are best to your family members. And I am the best to mine. From among you, I'm the best. Subhanallah. Which means he lived up to what he said. Many of us preach one thing and we live another. And this is where we falter and this is where we actually go wrong. Then the Prophet ﷺ speaks of another hadith, also in Sunan Ibn Majah. He speaks about the best of people. He says, Dhul qalbil makhmumi. Dhul qalbil makhmum. A person who has a heart that is makhmum. I'll explain the word makhmum in a moment, right? And a person who has a tongue that is sadiq. Wal lisan as sadiq. A truthful tongue. And a heart that is makhmum. So the Sahaba, the companions, radiallahu anhum, they asked, what is the meaning of al-qalb al mahmum Because lisan, sadiq, we've understood it. Truthful tongue. You don't say abuse, you don't say wrong words, false words, no deception, no false witness, etc., etc. We understood that. But what about al-qalb al mahmum You know what he said? He said, it is at-taqi an-naqi. It is that heart which is conscious of the Almighty, that heart which, which is pure and clean, the heart which is free, from sin, transgression, and jealousy. If you are free from jealousy, 
you have already arrived at a level that is very, very high. How many of us can say we're free from jealousy? Free from jealousy. Work on yourself, my brothers, my sisters. Work on it hard. You see someone with something better than you? Thank Allah for what you have. You are supposed to be looking at those who don't even have what you have. The problem with us, we're quick to look at what others have that we don't have. And we say, oh wow. But we didn't look at those who are looking at us and saying, oh wow, subhanallah. They are wowing themselves at you and you are wowing yourself at someone else and you don't realize two or three letters and you get to ya, subhanallah. You know, my jokes are quite dry. They actually take a little bit of thinking to, to catch. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors and make us from those who appreciate His favors upon us. And then we have a, a problem of greeting. People don't greet. Have you noticed that? We're in a masjid here right now. Right now. Do you know people will attend a function? They wouldn't have greeted each other. Even the person next to you, they wouldn't be greeting each other. I think we can spend a minute shaking hands with the person next to you, inshallah, and saying salam and saying your name, inshallah. We give you 30 seconds to do that, inshallah. Bi'ibnillah. It's for the sake of Allah. It will increase the love between us. I'm sure the sisters are doing that as well as the brothers, mashallah. It, it needs to be an environment of love. When people come to the masjid, my brothers, my sisters, there was a time when I was young, I used to look at some people who were a little bit older. Nowadays, maybe, inshallah, I hope it's not there. Uh, I need to say that, okay. So, we used to look at some of them. They used to give us dirty looks at times just because of, you know, perhaps they might, we might not have been dressed how they wanted us to be dressed. Brother, I've come to the masjid. Come on, man. You need to smile at me, make me feel at home. Tomorrow I'll come, inshallah, in a better position, in a better way. But if you chased me away, for, hey, what are you doing here? You're lost here today. Where do you want to go? The pub is that side, brother. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. These are the type of words that chase people away from goodness. This is the house of Allah. Anyone who makes others comfortable here and creates space for them is actually from among the best of people. Do you know there is a narration I came across today when I was actually going through the ahadith for this topic that the Prophet ﷺ says, the best from among you in salah is the one who has the softest shoulders. And you know what that means? What's a soft shoulder? You know when I'm standing comfortable in Ramadan, and then you have the guy who wants to cross the red traffic light, he budges in. And what happens? What do we do? By default, we just push him, push him further, push him further, right? That's what a lot of people do. And, they, and they, they make sure they make his life a misery. When he goes to sujood, they're there before him and there's no space for him to go in. Subhanallah. The reason why you're laughing is because you know what I'm talking about. Yes. So you want to be the best of people. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaks about the same thing in the hadith. He says the best of you are those whose shoulders are soft in salah, in the saf. What that means, someone comes, you create space for them. So what? Make space for someone. Perhaps Allah will make space for you in Jannah. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. The next time someone barges in, make space for them. Subhanallah. Like I say, and say to yourself and say to Allah that, Oh Allah, you know, I might just have been disturbed a little bit, but you make space for me in, in paradise. Ameen. And then when you're done with your salah, you tell the brother, Brother, do you do this every day or is it just today? You know, because we need correction as well. Say, today you're welcome, my brother. Alhamdulillah. But try to be here early tomorrow. We can both stand in the first of. And the next day he'll come early and guess what will happen? A third guy will come and do that. You know why? Because you're being tested by Allah. Are you ready to give others a space? Are you ready to give a lift to someone? Are you ready to reach out to someone? If you cannot reach out to someone in your prayer, do you really think you're going to reach out to people in anything else? It's not possible. Yeah, you, are, you need to love for others what you love for yourself. I want to be in the first saf. You know the hadith speaks about the importance of the first saf. If people knew the value of that first saf, you know, they would do a few things in order to make sure that they were there. They would draw lots. Put everyone's name in a hat because we're all here first. We all want to be in the first saf. Let's see whose name comes up to stand there. Subhanallah. But with us, mashallah, we are taught to come early. 
and you make it. If you haven't, you stand in the next saf by the will of Allah. So remember that hadith. You know, it did something to me when I read it today because after a long time I was reminded of this. It had already slipped my mind. The soft shoulders, the hadith says, the best from among you in salah, those with soft shoulders, mashallah. A lot of us, the hard shoulders. You know? I've been to the gym today, mashallah. You know? Subhanallah. So you're standing there, the guy must feel that, you know, I'm tough. Subhanallah, soften up a little bit, humble yourself. It's salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So the other narration says, Khayrukum man yabda bis salam. You know, when you're, when you're passing someone, there is an explanation of who should greet first. The one who's passing should greet the one who, the, those who are seated. Those in small numbers should greet those in a bigger number. And so on. The young should greet the old. But sometimes, people don't greet. They just walk past. So, what happens? We look at them and say, they didn't greet. Look how arrogant. Stop saying that. What about you? You could have greeted. But I didn't need to greet because I was older than this guy. The hadith says the young supposed to greet the old. That whole discussion is irrelevant because the hadith says the best from you, the one who starts with the salam. You say, Assalamu alaikum. Whether they reply you or not is irrelevant. You did it for Allah. So your reward is written. When I say to you, Assalamu alaikum, you say wa alaikum as salam or you don't say wa alaikum as salam. My reward is written. It's now up to you to get a reward. So why must I be bothered whether you replied me or not? You may not have heard me. And this is why the best from amongst us are those who think good and who develop good excuses for others who might be doing something we haven't understood. It's called husnul dhan. You see someone do something. You see someone hasn't replied you. Think to yourself, maybe they haven't heard me. Maybe they... Perhaps have a bit of wax in their ears. Okay, even that's a little bit derogatory. But anyway, maybe they haven't heard me. Maybe I didn't say it loud enough. Perhaps I didn't greet properly. Maybe they thought I was greeting someone else. All those maybes will take you to paradise. Why? Because they are good maybes. But the minute you see, no, he heard me loud and clear. He didn't want to greet. He arrogant. That uncle, I've known him for the last so many years. He's always like that. Look at his face. All that will lead to more and more and more. The next time you see him, you would just look at him and you wouldn't even want to greet. It happens with the sisters as well. I'm talking about uncle, uncle. What about the aunties? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah grant us goodness. Sometimes it becomes tough. You know, we attend religious functions and we're like strangers to each other. We make people feel so unwanted. We make people feel like they're in the wrong place. Why? You're welcome. Mashallah, it's your place. We're all part of one huge family. Just like if calamity were to strike, we would reach out to everyone, whether they were Muslim, non-Muslim, tall, short, this race, that race, wherever. We would reach out to them. Just like that, in goodness, we should reach out to the same crowds. Same, in the same way. Which means, no matter what race, no matter what ethnicity, no matter where they come from, what language they speak, how wealthy or poor they may be, no matter what religion they belong to, etc., etc., all that becomes irrelevant. Make sure you are the best. When you do things, do it for the pleasure of Allah. You know why? If it is acknowledged by mankind, that's a bonus. But if it is not acknowledged by man, you need to know it was always acknowledged by Allah. You did it for Allah. I greeted you for Allah. I helped you for Allah. I don't want. Inna nutu'imukum li wajhillahi la nuridu minkum wala shukura. When we feed, we feed for the pleasure of Allah. We don't even want a reward, recompense from you, nor do we want you to say thank you to us. No acknowledgement. I don't need an acknowledgement. Today when we finished our talks, we deliver what's known as a vote of thanks. If one name is missed by error, the brother becomes so upset he's depressed for three days. And after a week he writes a letter to say, guys, I gave you X, you didn't even say my name. But you mentioned the other guy's name because he's a top shot. It was a mistake. Yes, I do know to thank people is gratitude. Gratitude is a sign that is taught to us by Allah. It is in fact an, an attribute that is taught to us by Allah to show gratitude. If you're not going to be grateful to mankind, you will not be able to show gratefulness to Allah. That's what the hadith says. 
The reason is the people who did good to you, you can actually see them and you haven't even acknowledged them. How are you going to acknowledge the unseen? Subhanallah. So while we are taught to be grateful, we are also taught not to expect that gratitude from people, but rather from Allah. So two sides of the coin. We should thank people, but we shouldn't expect people to thank us. If they did, Alhamdulillah, if they didn't, Allah already knows it. And this is why you keep on going. I see people and you know, development takes years. It takes a long time and it takes many reminders and it takes working hard on yourself to develop yourself. You will not be able to develop yourself if you don't work hard on your character, your conduct. I remember back in the day, I used to feel so offended if one person said one negative sentence about me. Now they can write a whole book. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't. They can write a whole book. I know what I stand for. Those who are close to me know what I stand for. Those whom I interact with, they know what we stand for. And the same applies to every one of you. I'm sure you are brilliant people. Those who know, know. And those who don't know, don't. The problem is when those who know, know otherwise. Then you have a lot of correction to do. MashaAllah. I'm wording it so carefully. You notice? MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability to develop ourselves and to grant us goodness and ease. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ speaks about greeting. He says, the best from among you, those who start off with the salam. I already mentioned that hadith. Then he says, the best from among you are those who feed others. Feed others. Food. Wow. Amazing. Feed others. Those who feed others. So. It means you reach out to those who don't have as well as sometimes to those who do have. But you sit together, sometimes you eat. Let's go for a meal once in a while. Not that we're going to waste. But sometimes a group of friends come together, good buddies. Those who take care of the type of company they interact with and mix with and associate with are also the best of people. The best of people are also those who are careful about the type of people they mix with and careful about the type of people they are so that others who are mixing with them would consider themselves mixing with good people. That's a very powerful point. One is for me to be in good company, but what am I doing for others to consider me good company? Many times people say, Did you know what? Yeah, the best of people. Like when I started, I said the same thing. We look at others and say, they're not the best, they're not the best. How many of us could easily say, well, I lead my life in a way that I hope those around me do believe that I'm making an effort to be from among the best of people. Do you lead your life in that way? If not, you need correction. And if you are, it's a constant improvement. Constant improvement we require. So feeding food, which means reaching out to those who are poor, looking for them, searching for them, hunting for them, making sure we give them and don't just give throwaways to them. Sometimes we give things that we wouldn't eat ourselves and we say, well, they're hungry, they'll have it. No, something reasonable, something decent, something packed in a good way. They would take it from you and smile. Wow. I remember a beggar in Makkah al Mukarramah. I saw one of the hujjaj, one of the, the pilgrims in Makkah purchase a large number of Al -bakes. You know what Al Baik is? Sorry, not La Baik. Al Baik. There's a difference between the two, although they sound similar. MashaAllah. Al Baik is a restaurant there in Makkah, in, in, in that part of the world. So he must have liked the food there. He purchased so many and he decided to distribute it among those who are considered, you know, the cleaners and the others. And you should see the smile on their faces, subhanAllah, giving a hot meal full, closed, sealed in a packet. MashaAllah, that's for you, that's for you. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, we're used to just giving leftovers. Here is someone giving a proper meal. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah strengthen us. How many people there are out there who would dream of going into a restaurant and having a meal? Perhaps down the road, as we were coming here today, I was telling one of my colleagues, I said, you know what? There are enough restaurants here to feed the whole world. He told me, you'll be surprised. People from the whole world come here to eat. Is that true? Is that quite true? Yes, it is. There it goes. Subhanallah. So now I'm thinking to myself, I'm sure there are people who cannot afford it. And I'm sure there are people who can afford 20 meals. So have you ever considered take two people who can't afford it or a little family, take them out for the meal. 
and tell them, here it is, it'amu ta'am. Do it for the sake of Allah. You don't want to clock brownie points with them, but with Allah. You fed. And you can say to yourself that, oh Allah, I heard the hadith that the Prophet said that those who are the best, they feed people. Here I am. I'm just making them happy one day. One might argue, well, you know, that amount of money could be spent better elsewhere. It could be. But once in a while, this is also not a bad thing. Subhanallah. This is also not a bad thing. And the second part of that hadith is even more important for me. Moments ago, we said the best from amongst you, the, the one who greets first, right? This narration says the one who feeds and the one who replies the greeting. Oh, wow. Subhanallah. The one who replies. Look at how comprehensive the sunnah is. Talking of the best of people. You reply the greeting. You are the best of people. Reply. Why reply? Allah says, وَإِذَا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا When you are greeted with a greeting, respond with a better greeting. Which means, O oh people, when someone does good to you, do more good to them. And if you cannot do more good to them, then at least equate it. Someone said, Assalamu alaikum, which means may peace be upon you. MashaAllah, what a great dua. You need to reply to them, wa alaikum salam minimum. Try and add to it, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be upon you as well. The blessings of Allah, the mercy of Allah. You were better to them than they were to you. Do you know today, we look at people and we see how people harm each other. And we start saying, you know what? Friends used to be those who helped you and benefited you. Today, friends are those who at least do not harm you. If someone doesn't harm me, he's my buddy. I promise you, he's a good guy. I don't need anyone to benefit me anymore. That's the, the age we're living in is, if you are saved from the harm of someone else, he's a good man. Subhanallah. So ask yourself, are you from among those? The hadith and the Quran speaks about doing better to someone else than what they did to you. But I want to tell you, we have become so low that even if you just equated it, or even if you didn't harm them as a result, you would still be considered in today's world as a reasonable chap, subhanallah, a good person. May Allah make it easy for us. So this was to do with the responding of the salam. Then we have a very beautiful hadith narrated in Sunan, uh, in, in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad and Sunan al-Tirmidhi. The Prophet sallam says, the best companions in the eyes of Allah are those who are best to their own companions. That wording is superb, superb. خَيْرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرُهُمْ لِصَاحِبِهِ How amazing is that wording? Those of you who know the Arabic language, the best of companions in the eyes of Allah is he who is best to his own companions. Your buddies, your friends, your circle, your companions. If you are the best to them in the eyes of Allah, you are the best companion. And the hadith continues to say, The best neighbor in the eyes of Allah is the one who is best to his neighbors. This hadith goes to show that Islam doesn't teach you to look at others and worry about how good they are. But Islam says, your value is based on how good you are, not how bad they are. Did you get that? Your value is... Determined by how good you are, even in the face of harshness, in the face of bad, in the face of evil, don't look at your values. Someone swore you, don't swear them back because that was not you. They showed their true colors. It's your opportunity to show yours. You don't stand for those values. You don't believe in that derogatory way of life. You believe in something much loftier. So if they were to swear you, if they were to laugh at you, if they were to mock at you, if they were to try and abuse you verbally, etc. You don't have to be the gangster type of person to say, what did you just say here? You know, I've avoided the salt and pepper in the statement, but you know what it is, right? But that's what they do. Hey, bro, what did you say? Say it again. No, you heard it. You did. You did. You just got to look at them and laugh, <laughs> especially if you're a big guy, big guy. And they look at you, they're probably, mm. 
You know, when you turn around to look at them, they'll turn around to look at the air behind them. Subhanallah. Because they know if this guy just blows, I'll be gone, man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. But this is what it is. Learn to calm down. Learn to calm down. Look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa Look at what he did. Here's the Prophet sallallahu telling us that in the eyes of Allah, the best neighbor is he who is personally best to his own neighbors. Forget about what they're doing. Are you good to them? If you're good to them, you're the best of the lot. So that's also a beautiful, beautiful narration. Another narration, the best of people. Those whom when they owe others money, they pay on time. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. When you owe someone, when you owe someone, you pay on time. You become the best of people. And when you pay, you pay properly. You might want to give them a bonus that was not preconditioned. If it was preconditioned, it becomes usury, interest. If it was not preconditioned, it's acceptable. It's okay. Give them a gift, no harm. Why? They helped you, but it was not a condition. The minute it's a condition, it's a problem. So that's a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says that the best of people are those. Ahsanuhum qada'an. The best of those who, when, who give back on time. There is another narration that the Prophet ﷺ speaks about. It's the other side of the coin. Remember, Islam is comprehensive. It says, if you have given time to a person who owes you money, extended the time because you know that they cannot manage to pay you back and you do not desperately need that money, in that case, Allah will create time for you on the Day of Judgment. Subhanallah, if you made it easy for someone, you're a wealthy man, the guy owes you a thousand pounds and you're a multi-millionaire and you know he owes it to you and he told you I'll pay you next month and you know he's struggling and you say, don't worry my brother, you pay me as soon as you get that money and don't make him feel cheap. You go to, he won't even come to the masjid at some point. Why? He owes money. The minute he enters and he sees you in the first stuff and you're just looking back, he's already looking the other way. You know why I owe him a, a grand man? I owe him a K. What do they call it here? Yeah, a K. So, subhanallah. But they're supposed to look and greet. You know you're a wealthy person. Yes, he owes you. You know what? The hadith speaks about a man who was given Jannah. And he was asked, what is it that made you get into Jannah, into paradise? He says, I can't really think of things, but I do know I had a messenger. I used to send him to all the debtors and tell them, if you cannot pay, it's okay, you pay me when you can. So Allah looked at that quality, loved it so much, and chose to give me paradise. It's a hadith, sahih. It's a narration of the Prophet And that narration is not there just for us to look at and say, wow. It's there for us to look at and ask ourselves, do we give people time? Do we actually excuse people? Sometimes someone might tell you, I'll do this on this day. Yes, sometimes they have a bad habit. What's the bad habit? A lot of us have it. Maybe I may have it at times where we become a little bit complacent, we become a little bit, you know, not so regular or punctual with certain things. But we need to improve. Don't make it a habit. Become punctual. When you say six o'clock, it's six o'clock. When you say eight o'clock, it's eight o'clock. You know, subhanallah. When we say Greenwich mean time, it's supposed to be Greenwich mean time, subhanallah. Don't change it to mean something else that just allows you to to take a little bit longer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. Now let's move on to something very important. When it comes to spirituality, when it comes to closeness with Allah, do you want to know who's the best from amongst you? The best of people? Who are they? They are the ones who learn the Quran and teach it to others. Khayrukum man ta'allam al Quran wa allamahu. No doubt. The best of people are those who learn the Quran and convey it to others. Now, like I said at the beginning, there's no contradiction between any of these narrations. The reason is all of this is connected to character and conduct. When the Prophet, peace be upon him's wife, Aisha, radiallahu anha, was asked about the character of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what was he like? She said, Kana Quran. His character was the Quran. He was an embodiment of the entire Quran. He lived by it. He lived with it. He lived exactly like it was. He was a moving Quran. Subhanallah. 
his character, his conduct, everything was meticulous, proper. Subhanallah. So if you learn the Quran and you practice it and you convey it to others, you become the best of people from every aspect because it will correct your link with Allah, which is of prime importance, and it will improve you as a person and your character and conduct, which is a sign of the link with Allah. The link with Allah, important. It's the most important thing. But a sign of that link is your character and conduct. That's why when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the characteristics of the people of Jannah, you've heard this hadith, I'm quite sure, before. If you haven't, well, he said, the characteristics are taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluq. The people of paradise will enter paradise predominantly with two qualities. One is the consciousness of their maker and two is their character and conduct. The greatness of their character and their conduct. So this is something important. Let's make an effort to learn the Quran. Let's make an effort to learn how to read it, recite it, understand it, put it into practice, convey it to others. Have you ever sat with anyone? your buddies, your children, your family members, your anyone else, and spoken about one verse of the Quran? Have you? Have you? A lot of the young boys and girls would say no. Some would say yes. I'd like to see that number grow who say yes, I have. We have. We spoke about one ayah, and the next week we spoke about another ayah, and then my friend came up with the third ayah. What are you doing? You learned the Quran and you're teaching it, you're talking about it to others. You are becoming from among the best of people. If you don't understand a verse, go and learn, go and ask, go and seek knowledge. And don't get trapped by those who have a warped understanding of the words of Allah. They don't have that knowledge where they would be able to explain to you the meanings of the verses that may not be understood so easily. There is a context to the revelation of the verses. The understanding of some of the verses would require a person of knowledge. Otherwise, you may just go astray. So if you have a question and if you really do not understand something, please ask those of knowledge as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us. Then we have another narration and I have a few more minutes. I've spoken for a whole hour, but I still have a few minutes inshallah. And we will call Salatul Adhan for Salatul Isha as soon as I'm done inshallah. I'll try not to delay. The hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, two more narrations I will mention. Sunan at Tirmidhi. He says, Khayrun nas man taala umuruhu wa hasuna amaluhu. The best of people are those whom Allah gave a long life and they did lots of good deeds in that long life. And the worst of people are those whom Allah gave a long life and they did very bad deeds in that long life. What that means is if Allah gave you a long life and you used it to do good deeds, oh, you're one of the best of people. But if Allah gave you a long life and you did not do good deeds, the hadith says, well, then you're a bad person. But it's not late. You can always seek forgiveness. At least you will be forgiven by Allah. And the one who has achieved the forgiveness of Allah has won the race. They've won the race. What that means is, Last minute you turn to Allah. The problem is we don't know when is last minute, right? If we knew when last minute was, if you and I knew that we're going to live for 50 years, 49 years and 350 days later, we say, oh Allah, forgive me for what's happened. Five days, boom, when we're done. Just before the whistle blows, five goals. MashaAllah, we won, five won. But we were losing one nil all along, subhanAllah. So that is a very important narration to say, as Allah gives you life, do some good. Do good with it. So you know you've actually banked a lot of good deeds in the bank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last narration speaks about the worst of people. Why am I ending with this? Because when we want to talk about the best of people, we must give a comparison. And we must look at who is the worst. If you want to see who is the worst, you've got to understand what the Prophet ﷺ has said. And that will make you realize the value of the best. So here goes. The Prophet ﷺ says, the worst person in the eyes of Allah is the one whom the people have left. The people have gone away from. They stay away from because they want to save themselves from the harm of that person. 
which means the person has so much evil, so much harm that no one wants to even interact with them. No one wants to mix with them. No one wants to be with them. People want to go away. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we're doing this in our own houses. We're doing it with our children. We're doing it with our grandchildren, our daughters-in-law, son in, sons-in-law, and vice versa. We're doing it all over. It's at home where I know of children who don't want to go home. Why? You know what's going to happen at home? They're just going to do this and they're going to say that. And you don't even want to go home. That means someone at home is bad. There's something or we are bad. Something's wrong. We should be such the best of people are those whom when they walk past, everyone wants to associate with them. Everyone is brought into a good mood. There's a positive vibe that comes out. Those are the best of people. They are helpful. They have a good expression. They talk well. They don't deceive. But if we are bad, the hadith says that the worst of the people are those whom everyone wants to stay away from in order to be protected from the harm that comes from that person. May Allah not make us from those. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. It was quite a tough topic. It was a very good topic. It was more of learning. And I really pray that Allah help me to become a better person. And Allah help every one of us to become a better person.